Right, this is such an amazing experience actually. Every stone breathes ancestors. So it has some restoration work done to it. That's probably a toilet area. You yeah, had to do it, didn't they? The Abbey again. Um, yeah, this is the palace part where the guests were kept. It's very far down there. I can, think I can hear a, a stream as well. Look at these stones, look. Designed and built by David the First. It is Matilda's her second husband. Let's have a look up here. I just love it all. Oh, I don't like to rush. Three hours isn't long enough. I need a whole day here. Six hours is the sort of time I need. So I might have to go and repark. I think they might have looked out of this window. They stayed here a lot. Oh, that's a drop. They might have looked out of this window. Some carvings on the wall. They don't know exactly where they were buried though, apparently. But it could be within inside the abbey as opposed to the palace, couldn't it? It's like, almost like going back to the Roman domes, isn't it? I'll read the booklet as well. The Abbey Church in Tier, that's the church. A short tour of Dunn Abbey and Palace. The monks pass the days within their choice cloister, an open square to the south of the church with the covered alleys around the edge. Gatehouse. Which is that building there? The kitchens, the guest houses, the refectory, we have an important place for eating in that, the Abbey Church, St. Margaret. So, if there's a shrine to St. Margaret. Apparently David and Matilda would be buried not far from there. King David and the Abbey, look there's a whole section on it. David I was the youngest of Malcolm and Margaret's six sons and the last to succeed to the throne. Like his mother, to whom he was devoted, he was intensely pious. Dunfermline was the burial ground of his parents and he be bestowed great wealth upon it after he became king in 1124. He set about elevating the priory to a major abbey. Like his mother, David looked to Canterbury for guidance. And in 1128, Geoffrey, prior of Canterbury, became Dunfermline's first abbot. There's quite a bit about that. Does, he mention, does it mention Matilda? David I succeeds his elder brother Alexander II as king. At his death in 1153, he is buried at Dunfermline uh, beside his father and mother. A royal museum and holy shrine. Dunfermline was adopted as a burial place of ruling 
Canmore dynasty by Malcolm III and Queen Margaret. The loss of Iona, the, the traditional burial place of Scottish kings, to the Kingdom of Norway in 1098 had created a need for a new royal mausoleum. Malcolm III and Queen Margaret were buried close to the high altar of the original church near the position later occupied by the nave of the new church. Margaret's remains were moved to a more fitting location on the north side of the high altar in 1180. Her relics and the body of Malcolm were moved to a special chapel at the east end of the Abbey Choir in 1250. And the miracles of St Margaret recorded. Yeah, I must go to that. So that's a little bit about that. So that when we're here we can understand they, the importance of Malcolm the Third and Margaret. <sighs> they were connected to us via another line as well, a European line. They are connected, so we are actually connected in two ways to the Scottish Royals. Through Malcolm the Third, one way, and Matilda of Huntington the other way. These would all be in chambers, you see. Now we're getting into a darker area. Oh, I wonder what this is. In here. Ooh. The cellars. This is where they kept the food or something in here. The ceilings. Oh, you can fill them. Fill the stone. Touch the stone. I wonder if any of her children were born here. Walk through a wood. Yes, yeah, so they would have been in this very building, everyone. No plaque. The solid pillars holding it up. It's lucky there's no one about so I can talk openly. It's midweek, you say. Right, I'm turning off for a minute.